Okay, so in this video, we're going to pick up where we left off last time. Last time, we had observed that there was a problem uh, with our, our restaurant's route. We ran this test, and it failed. It failed right here on line 91, and the reason it failed was because we were our, our server, when we request the slash restaurant's route, is returning a 404 not found rather than what we expected or what the test suite's expected, which was a 200 error code. So now we're going to talk about how we start to examine our code to see what's going wrong, right? And, and I'm going to go over here and actually go into my source code. Now, one of the things that understanding the error message allows me to do is to narrow things down a little bit and get a sense of, a, of where, where, I, where to start. Because I know that I'm testing my server. And I have some sense of like where that server code is. That's over here in server.kt. And this is the code that actually, you know, establishes the routes on the backend server and is responsible for, for handling them and things like that. Um, now, when, you know, maybe the first step that I'm not going to like do a video on, it's be pretty boring, um, is look at the code a little bit. Right. For now, some people at this point decide, OK, I understand what the problem is. And my approach is I'm going to stare at the code for an hour. You can do that. It's not the most efficient method for finding problems. I would suggest you use a slightly more active strategy. And so uh, imagine that you've stared at your code for five minutes and you can't see what the problem is. Sometimes you can, you know, like over time, get better at this. You have more of a spider sense for like where things might be wrong. And, you know, you have a sense of like, oh, okay, well, I know that must be a problem here. And sometimes the air itself will really help you zero in on where the problem is but you may not be there yet. That's okay. So what do we do in the meantime, right? Rather than just stare at the code really hard and look for mistakes. Yeah, it's not all that effective. What I'm going to show you how to do is something called uh, print or printf debugging. Printf debugging is a term. Printf is a term from the C programming language. Um, and this is sometimes, you know, a little bit of a maligned strategy. People think, oh, well, that's not how, what real programmers do. I'm a real programmer. I know real programmers. We all do this. This is something that everybody does and used judiciously and carefully. It's a very, very effective strategy. So what we're going to do is we don't know what's happening. And so to find out more about what's happening, we're going to add logging statements or print statements to our code. So as it runs, we can see a little bit about what's happening. And this allows us to do things like examine variables and test hypotheses about the code that's being executed. Okay, so I looked through this a little bit and, and I noticed that there's a get restaurants method here. Um, and right now, I let me, let, me mod, let me modify this a little bit um, in the sense of, uh, let me actually put this inside a return statement to return mock response. Okay, there we go. Um, I was a little too clever about that. Um, so now I've got this method and, you know, maybe I'm not constructing the response properly. That's one hypothesis. So one of the things I kind of like to know is, does the code get here? But maybe this isn't being executed at all. Now, before you start print debugging, uh, one thing that I would always suggest is add some, a statement somewhere that you're sure it's going to be executed. And so I'm going to put a print statement right here. Uh, I'm going to say entering dispatch. And, you know, frequently it's good to have some coordinates in your print statements that are connected to like the, this is at the top of this method. So I'll say entering whatever. I'm going to run this again. So the reason to do this before I start putting print statements in other places is I want to make sure I can see the output. Sometimes there's something wrong with my setup and none of my print statements show up. And that can be very, very confusing. So First thing I want to do is just make sure like when I put a printlet in here, I'm actually going to see the, the output somewhere, right? And you'll see that when I run this, I see entering dispatch. And so this is working. So I'm seeing this print statement. So now what I can do is I can put print statements other places. And if I see them, that means that during this test, the code, that part of the code executed. If I don't see them, it means it didn't. And so now let's try to figure out if this method is actually being executed. So I'm going to call println get restaurants. And, and I like to say, you know, like entering get restaurants, something like that. Okay, run it. 
Let's see what happens. And, you know, and, and this is, I'm running one test, you'll see. I'm not running the whole suite. If you run the whole suite, you're going to get a lot of gibberish, right? That's another reason to run one test. This allows me to, to focus exactly on the output that I want to see. Um, okay, so, and so you'll see test for us, route. I see entering dispatch, but I don't see this print statement. So I never got here. And frequently, you know, more often than I care to admit, the problem with the piece of code that you wrote is that it's just never being executed. Like the code never gets there for whatever reason. Your method may be perfect. And, you know, I've worked with people before where it's like they've spent, you know, an hour like staring at this and Googling and looking around and doing lots of other things. And like, and they still can't figure out what the problem is. And you're like, is that method even being called? And we put in some print statements like, nope. You know, so the code they wrote is perfect. It's just actually never running, right? And typically code that doesn't run doesn't have much of an effect. So, so, you know, this is really good to get a sense initially of like what's happening, right? Like let's test our assumptions. Get restaurants isn't even being called, right? It's possible that this code is also wrong, right? I don't know, but it's not being run right now. And so the fact it's not being run is itself an issue. So let's try to figure out why it's not being run. Now, some of you may see immediately what the problem is and okay, fine, right? But, but you know, imagine it's been a long night. It's like 4 a.m., you know, you're tired, you're sleepy, you're, you're, your vision's a little blurry. You may not see things, you know, right away. Um, so now let's think about what's happening. So, um, you know, and it can, you can put print statements wherever you want, right? So let's put a, a print statement here. We'll say uh, starting dispatch tree. And then I'm going to put a print statement uh, here. Well, actually, uh, so so how does this work? This is a win statement. It tests a couple things. Um, the place where it it gets where things end up if I don't find anything is right here. Um, and so I'll put a print statement in here. Printlin uh, didn't find route. Okay, let's run it. Uh, and, you know, given that this is where that 404 is generated, I have a suspicion that this is what's happening, but I'd like to confirm, it. Um, you know, because it's possible something else is going wrong. I don't know. Right. I mean, you know, a lot of times, you know, and, and, and I've done this for a long time. And so when I say I don't know, I'm, I'm really I kind of do know. But here's the thing. A lot of times when there's something wrong with your code, it's because something that you think is happening is not happening. And what we're doing with these print statements is we're testing our assumptions. So sometimes, you know, you may think, oh, I know that that's not, that code isn't running, or I know that that if statement isn't being entered. Don't be so sure, right? Sometimes it's those things that you're so certain about that are causing you problems, right? Because one of them's not true and it's like, oh shoot. And once you realize that, then the whole thing cracks open. Okay, um, so now let's look at the output from this and it says didn't find route. Right. And so sure enough, I'm entering, I'm inside this else statement. And rather than, and now I start to look here, I say, okay, well, well, what's the actual path here? Let's, let's actually print, print the path right here that I'm looking for, uh, to, to see, you know, to have that piece of information. This is an example of, of displaying the value of a variable. Uh, cause, cause I made some changes to the path right here and who knows, maybe this line of scary looking code is, is wrong, right? Maybe it's, it's broken. Maybe it just, just, you know, completely mangles the path. Um, so what I see when I click on this again, is I see, I was looking for the path restaurants and now, now I'm, I'm really zeroing in, right? In the sense of like, okay, I'm, I have a sense of, you know, a small area of code that probably has the problem in it. And sure enough, when I look at this harder, I see don't, you know, I just, you know, and I've done this, right? I, I've done this again more times than I care to admit. Um, just, I just fat fingered it, right? Just forgot the S, you know, and it, they look similar. It's a long word. It's got a lot of use. Restaurants is one of those words that like hard to type. You have to, you have to think hard when you're typing it. You know, I'm just getting old, but um, all right. So let's try it again. Now, in this moment, like frequently when I've been doing this for like 20 minutes, I just want to be like, I'm done. I want to tear all my print statements out and just be done, right? But but don't run the test first. Let's make sure it works. Um, you know, once it works, sometimes if I'm still working on other things, I might leave some of this in there for a little while. I mean, it's not hurting anything, the print statements. I mean, you know, uh, 
take it out before you commit, you know, take it out before, you know, whatever. But, you know, now I can go through and I can say, okay, I'm, I'm, I probably don't need these print statements now. I'm just going to take them out. You could also just comment them out temporarily, particularly when you're developing. It would be use, useful to have these. Um, okay. Run it again. Um, this is still going to, to pass, but I've taken out some of my logging, so, so that's good. Right? Because I don't want to have that logging. Oh, I still left one piece in. Here it is. Okay. All right. Print debugging. Standard debugging technique. You know, just a, a way to continue to make forward progress. And so when you come to the help site now, we expect you to have clean code in the sense that it's formatted properly and doesn't have big blobs of commented out code in the middle. We expect you to know what the problem is. If you have to spend some time with the test suites, reading through them and getting a sense of like, what are they trying to do? And what is my code? Why is my code not meeting the expectations? And then putting in some instrumentation. And sometimes you'll still be stuck, right? And we'll have to talk through like what's happening, but using print statements to find out more about what's happening. You can use them again to print variables. You can use them to identify code flow paths. Um, you know, and it's a tremendously useful technique. And like I said, this is a technique that every software creator uses, right? Uh, as part of their toolkit. Now, is it always sufficient? No, there's sometimes we need some, some uh, more, more firepower in terms of the tools we use. Um, but you can get a long way with this particular technique. One other thing before I go, I, we'll talk about this on our next set of, of debugging technique videos, but I wanted to slip this in there um, just to give you a little bit of a hint and to, to encourage you to do a particular thing. So I'm gonna make a small change to this. Well, I hope this will actually do what I want. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, and it didn't do what I want, that's too bad. Let me uh, try something else. Let's see here, how about this? Will I do it? Uh, let's see. Um, or what if I do something like this? Nope. Uh, what I'm trying to do, uh, will this work? I'm trying to trigger a an, an error. <laughs> this is hard with Kotlin. It was it was, it was easier with Java, right? Um, and hmm, hold on a sec. Got to be more creative here. Maybe maybe if I do this. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So. What I've done is I've triggered a warning. Now over here on the and, and some of you know some of you are new to Android Studio. Cool, right? Let me show you something that's cool about it. You've been using these text editors up to this point that didn't have very many capabilities, but Android Studio is a powerful tool for working with code. And one of the things it can do to help you is it can spot problems. Um, so over here on the right side, you'll see that there's now a little, first of all, I see this up here. And it says one warning. And then down here, there I, I see this is highlighted over here. And then I see it's over here on the gutter too. So that's another place I can see it. And in this case, what it's warning me is that this variable is never modified. And it has a suggestion, which is this, it says, I can change it to a val. The code we've given you in general, so let's open up client.kt. You'll see it's being analyzed and you'll see a green checkbox. We have given you code that as much as we could, and I can't promise everything because they're always coming up with new checks, but as much as possible, we've given you code that's clean uh, in the sense that there are no warnings. So if you start to generate warnings, check them out, right? Particularly if you're debugging. If you're debugging and you got a bunch of warnings, sometimes Android Studio knows something about the code that would be helpful for you to know. Now, in this case, you know, this is one of these things where it's just kind of warning me that yeah, I never changed this variable, so I might as well use a val. It's not a huge thing. But there are things about the code that it, it, it will be able to detect. For example, you know, assignment versus equality, it's pretty good at detecting. Like certain conditions are never true, right? Um, and things like that, right? So, so that can be really useful uh, for, for, your, for your debugging um, and for your general sanity, right? Which is to use the IDE to help you. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a later video. All right, good luck. Um, and we'll see you on the help site number four.